Formula One's 2024 preseason testing is almost upon us. And if you're new to the sport and maybe don't understand how preseason testing goes, I'm here to give you the lowdown. This year, preseason testing will take place from Wednesday, February 21st to Friday, February 23rd. Testing will run from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on each day, local time, 30 minutes less than the previous year. Testing itself takes place at the Sakia circuit in Bahrain, which is now the regular testing location because it takes place at the same race circuit that the season opener will take place at a week later. It's part of F1's quest to be carbon neutral. Testing used to take place at Barcelona de Catalunya over two weeks, totaling six days. That meant teams had way more time back then to run their cars and fix issues before the season started. These three days is all they get to test their new machinery. And it's only a week before the season actually starts at the same circuit, but that's not a lot of time to fix any big issues if you find them. They don't have a whole lot of time to get new parts flown out. The only thing they've got is those three days and any simulator work they've done beforehand. You've got to get it right. What makes it more difficult for teams though is that they can't run both of their cars. Each team can only run one car on each day, which means teams either have to have one driver in all day and then another takes over the day after, or they alternate between one driver having the morning session and another driver having the afternoon session. Some teams prefer to do things differently. The most important thing with testing, and it's difficult, don't focus on the times. We know that as the teams are running around, and people start getting on the soft tires and putting in fast laps and everyone's like, oh, maybe, maybe they are quick. We don't know what fuel teams are running. We don't know what car setups they're running. We don't know what engine modes they're running. Some teams will be working on one lap pace at various times over the three days. Often they'll be on race pace. Uh, some will be working on tire deg. They'll be messing about with the setup, trying to see what works, trying new parts, trying various different things. You can never get a true read from testing. You can get an understanding of how a car looks though. Back when these new regulations started in 2022, the Mercedes, for instance, on track didn't look good. It looked like a handful from the onboard. So from that perspective, you can say, okay, well, this car doesn't look like it's as, as planted as the Red Bull, but Really, on the last day, we sometimes start to see some improvements in times and you get kind of an understanding. You can't rely on it. So please always take times in testing with a pinch of salt. I beg you. Also, just want to touch on a few things you might see in preseason testing that look a little bit odd. Aero rakes. These are pretty weird looking, but come in many different shapes and sizes and can be fitted to really any part of the car. Essentially, each point on the rake has a sensor and these can accurately record the airflow over certain parts of the cars. These are pretty common in pre-season testing because the teams want to ensure that the data they're receiving from their simulators back home and their computer runs are matching with what's actually happening on track. Another way to do this is with Flovis. This is paint that the teams will quite literally brush onto the cars, usually around the front wing, the rear engine cover and the side pots. When the car travels around the circuit, the paint streaks all around the airflow areas. So the engineers and designers can look at it closely back in the garage and see maybe where the air is getting stuck and where it's flowing particularly well. It gets pretty messy and usually it's either bright green or bright yellow. I hope Stake have ensured they have a different color other than green. There's just one more thing that you might see at pre-season testing. These things, sandbags. Not literally, plenty of teams though do not show their true pace. They hide it, especially if they think that they're actually pretty fast. They hold some stuff back as not to give the game away too early that they're gonna be fast. Filming days. Every team also has two filming days or promotional days. The idea of these is for teams to film their own internal content or record various things for sponsors and partners, that sort of thing. But teams do tend to use them as shakedowns or extra shakedowns as well. Previously, teams were only allowed two days of 100 kilometers each, but that's now been doubled this year to 200 kilometers. The 200 kilometers must be done in one single day. It can't be split across two days so you can't for instance have 
four days of doing 100 kilometers. It doesn't work like that. You get two days of 200 kilometers and you have to do that 200 kilometers in the whole day. Other restrictions on filming days, which are officially classified as promotional events, remain the same, which include that cars need to be fitted with an FIA ECU and use tires manufactured specifically for such events. As well as the filming days, teams are also allowed two demonstration events, which are 50 kilometers each. There used to be a requirement for teams to inform all of the teams when they were doing a demonstration event, but that is no longer required. Pirelli tire tests. These are tire tests that take place during the season and often before and after the season as well for the tire manufacturer Pirelli. Much the same regulations apply as filming days and the only thing that's different is the teams are trying various tires provided by Pirelli for the purposes of either improving the current tires or getting data on the new ones. The testing for Pirelli has actually increased this year from 35 days to 40 days. More often than not, it's done after a race weekend. Running an old car. While teams are restricted on testing, there are some allowances when it comes to older cars. Teams can run private, unrestricted tests, providing the car was at least two years old. As it happens, that now brings the current regulation of ground effect cars into the equation, as they're now two years old. There are some restrictions here though, stating that any components run must have been previously ran at a race weekend. This is to stop teams putting new parts on an old car to gain data. Teams are also restricted by the FIA on what sensors they can run. No test parts, sensors, instrumentation, test software, component changes, operational tests or procedural tests will be permitted, which give any sort of information to the competitor that is related to cars of the current championship or cars complying with TCC. For the avoidance of doubt, only instrumentation and sensors that are required for the reliable operation of the car and have been fitted at one or more races of the period will be permitted. Some teams choose to run drivers in their old cars just to get them back up to speed for the start of a new season. The off season can be a long time out for a driver. So some, some teams feel the need to get them in on, on an old machinery just to get them up to speed a little bit. You often see junior drivers as well testing the old machinery. It's a way for them to get a feel for Formula One and, and, and the jump up that they might have. As a rule though, there isn't much benefit teams gain in terms of data from running these old cars because Formula One moves so fast in the development that they don't really benefit from it. But there we have it. 2024 testing is this week. We are almost at the start of the season, but hopefully you are now fully up to date on what to expect from testing. I will be live streaming it on YouTube and on Twitch all three days. So I'll be keeping up with the action. Join me. I appreciate it's not the most exciting thing pre-season testing, but I just love seeing the cars going round and, and just getting an idea of where the pecking order is this year. So I enjoy that aspect. If you're interested, join me and I hope you enjoyed this video.